the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with Amen. Jesus. My brothers and sisters, a very Merry Christmas to you all, and a warm word of welcome to all who are gathered with us this evening, for those here present, for family and friends who may be visiting, and for those of us, those joining us uh, virtually, know that you're almost welcome to the celebration of the Mass on this great Christmas Eve as we celebrate the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that all who might believe in him would not perish but might have eternal life. Eternal life, joy and happiness is what our Lord comes to bring to us. And so we begin Mass by first acknowledging that from which we need to be saved. We acknowledge our sin that we might more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the year by year as we await in hope for our redemption grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten son as our redeemer we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen, amen. for Mass will be taken from Mass during the night, which can be found in the Missalette beginning on page 33. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you, as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. 
for the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They named him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, 
eager to do what is good, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. There are a lot of ways for us to get into the Christmas spirit, and by all estimations, uh, people were starting a little bit earlier this year than usual, trying to get into that spirit. And so each of us has probably a different thing that gets us in the Christmas spirit. For some, it's the baking. Others, it's writing out the cards or getting the cards or looking through them. For others, it might be shopping, probably online a lot more, but still, nonetheless, shopping and the wrapping of many gifts. Brothers, it's the lights. Either putting up lights in our own house or on our own tree, or going around in the neighborhood and seeing how others have decorated their house with lights. But one of the traditions I think that is pretty universal is watching certain Christmas movies. I know for me, um, it's not really Christmas until I watch two movies in particular. First, It's a Wonderful Life. And secondly, Home Alone. <laughs> now, there are many others. I appreciate them all. But those are the two that I have to watch. And I, I did watch this week again to get me into the Christmas spirit. Now, I imagine you'd think that Father would uh, speak about It's a Wonderful Life because, after all, there's an angel involved. And it wrestles with the deep philosophical questions of our existence and, and so, on, so on. But um, I actually want to talk about Home Alone with you, okay? <laughs> uh, and for one thing, I just... 
Listen. more of a PSA, a public service announcement. There are a lot of people who I'm learning more and more have not seen Home Alone. And that needs to be fixed immediately, okay? <laughs> so you youngsters who are here, if you've never seen this before, um, you have to. You have to see Home Alone. And I'm talking the original, the 1990 classic, okay? The second one's not so bad either, okay? But the original is what I'm talking about here, okay? Now for those of you who may have been deprived and never seen this movie, allow me to give you a brief synopsis of it. So there's this Chicago-based family, the McAllisters, who take a lavish Christmas trip to Paris. But the youngest son, Kevin, played by Macaulay Culkin, is accidentally left behind and doesn't make it to the airport or onto the flight with his family to Paris. It's realized mid-flight that Kevin is not with them. It's Mrs. McAllister, played by the great Catherine O'Hara, who discovers this, realizes it, and feels terrible. And she is desperate, of course, to get home to her boy. They arrive in Paris and get settled in their hotel, but they realize that there are not really any flights that are available between then and Christmas to get back to Chicago. But that does not deter Mrs. McAllister. She is determined to get home as soon as humanly possible. And so she sets off on her own to get to Chicago. Meanwhile, back at home, there's Kevin, who is kind of on his own, and who has to combat two rather hapless burglars who are trying to break into his home. One of my favorite scenes from the movie comes um, at about the midway point, when Mrs. McAllister, Catherine O'Hara, is trying to uh, hop flights and make her way, kind of hopscotching across uh, Europe and uh, North America to try to get home. So she's taking a flight from Paris to Dallas, and then Dallas to Scranton, and now she's trying to get a flight from Scranton back to Chicago. And the scene has her in the airport in Scranton at the American Airlines counter, um, and she's talking to a very helpful um, ticket agent who's trying his best, but who has to break the news to her that there's simply uh, no way that she's gonna get home in time. There, there are no flights. And she's insisting, she says, there's gotta be a way. And he says, there, there's no way. She goes, well, maybe another airline has a seat. And she, she checks and there are no seats available on that flight on any other airline either. And so then in this outburst of motherly rage, she yells, no, 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 no. This is Christmas, the season of perpetual hope. <laughs> and with that enters John Candy, who plays the polka king of the Midwest, <laughs> if you remember. And he explains, he pulls her away, tries to calm her down, pulls her away from the ticket counter and says, uh, he's in the same boat, basically, that he and his band, and he points to these knuckleheads all sitting together in their big yellow band jackets, he says, we missed our flight, and so we're trying to get to Milwaukee, but one of us is gonna rent a big budget truck, and we're gonna pile in and make our way to Milwaukee, and we'll drop you off happily on the way to Chicago, on the way. And she says, you'll do that for me. And he goes, yeah, it's Christmas, you gotta get home. And thus ensues the final leg of Mrs. McAllister's journey back to Chicago to be with her son, who at that point is home alone. Now, for me, this movie, re-watching it again this week, resonates with me because of this year in a new way. Because we all know the challenges we faced this past year, together as a community and also individually. So I think we can perhaps identify with Mrs. McAllister's frustration, wanting to scream, no, this can't be the way it is. Uh, enough, enough, I just, I just want things to return to normal. But yet, amid her frustration and anger, and in some, some sense, desperation, she does hit the nail on the head when she says, this is the season of perpetual hope. For the past few weeks, we've been singing together that great anthem of Advent, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Ransom, Captive Israel. The, the story of salvation history is one of ransom. That is, paying what is owed for the salvation of another. We know well the first sin of our parents, Adam and Eve, 
how they messed up God's perfect design for humanity and through their disobedience ushered into the world pain and sickness and brokenness and even death itself. All the junk that you and I face on a daily basis was all ushered in because of that first sin. But so too, at that same moment, God realized that he could fix all of this. He knew he wanted everything to be back to normal. And so he sets in motion a great plan. A plan which included many different figures along the way. The great patriarchs of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the rest. The great kings like David and Solomon. The great prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all the rest. All these different players had their part in salvation history. They all had a role in this great epic story of our salvation. And then we come, of course, to our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, who are invited in a singular way to bring us to that final leg of salvation history. Tonight we celebrate the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he humbled himself to take on our human nature in all ways but sin. <clears throat> Jesus came to ransom us from our captivity. Emmanuel, God is with us. <clears throat> from what is Jesus wanting to save us? Well, from our brokenness from our hopelessness, from the feeling of dread and torment, from that nagging desire for things to be back to normal, back to a way we'd enjoy. That is precisely what God sends his son to fulfill for us, to bring us back home, safe and sound. If I can return to that great movie, Home Alone, for just a moment. You may remember the two hapless burglars trying to break into the McAllister home. Now, while I'm not endorsing their behavior, it is pure comedy to watch them navigate Kevin's booby traps they set up all around the house. One thing after another after another. And again, it's, it's really funny and rather creative on Kevin's part of how he keeps the burglars at bay. Maybe at the close of the year 2020, we might feel like those burglars, one thing after another being thrown at us, another obstacle, another challenge. And just when we think things couldn't get worse, maybe something else seemingly befalls us. Maybe it, for us it's not a paint can in the head or uh, you know, a blowtorch on the head and all the other things that Kevin McAllister does. But nevertheless, I'm sure many of us are kind of weary, feeling like, are we ever gonna get back to normal? You might think, how long is this going to last? How much more can I take? Will things ever return to the way they once were? But tonight's celebration of Christmas, of the Incarnation, gives us God's definitive answer. Yes, it's going to be all right. Because God is with us. Emmanuel. In fact, the very name Jesus that is given to Mary by the angel Gabriel, that very name Jesus comes from a, another name, Joshua, which simply means God saves. And that's precisely what the mission of Jesus is all about. Saving us. Saving us from hopelessness. Saving us from despair. Saving us from all the things that hold us back from being fully alive and free and joyful. God comes to save us from all the nonsense and junk and despair. And we have to remember that Jesus still comes to us now, sometimes in expected ways and also in those unexpected moments. Our God comes to us every time we do what we're doing right now, gathering for the Eucharist, hearing the word of God proclaimed, receiving him in Holy Communion. He comes to us in very real, tangible ways to nourish our hearts and our minds so that we might have the strength to persevere amid 
difficulties and amid the challenges of life. But God also comes to us in unexpected ways. Kind of like Mrs. McAllister finding hope in a polka band, making their way from Scranton to Milwaukee. So perhaps a good Christmas exercise over the next couple of weeks is to be on the lookout for ways in which God comes to us. In the expected ways, but also in those more subtle ways. The kind word or expression of a neighbor or a friend, or even a perfect stranger for that matter. Being on the lookout to see how God makes himself present is a really good exercise in the season when we celebrate the Incarnation. God comes to us in a myriad of ways to assure us that all will be well. That God indeed does save us. This Christmas, perhaps more than ever, we need to hunker down and remember that fundamental reality. That everything, despite our fear and our anxiety, despite whatever we're going through personally or collectively, it's going to be all right. Because God is with us. Indeed, we will be fine. We'll make it through. Because we have hope in the season of perpetual hope. We know that we will never, ever be alone. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. God has revealed his love for us in sending us his only begotten Son to be our Savior. Therefore, in great confidence, we offer to him our petition. The response is, Newborn King, hear our prayer. <coughs> For our Holy Father, bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Lord continue to bless them in their ministry of heralding the birth of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Newborn, Newborn King, King, hear our prayer. For those who hold political power, may the grace of the Holy Spirit help them to use their position for the sake of the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Newborn, Newborn King, King, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering the effects of the pandemic, either through sickness, financial strain, or mental distress, may the Holy Spirit's healing power overshadow them. Let us pray to the Lord. Newborn New King, King, hear our prayer. For those who are burdened this holiday season because of grief, anxiety, or illness, may they experience renewed hope in the knowledge that God is with us always. Let us pray to the Lord. Newborn New King, King, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may we be bold witnesses to the truth of the gospel revealed to us by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Newborn King, hear our prayer. For those who have died, 
May they rejoice eternally with God and all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Newborn King, hear our prayer. For the intentions each of us brings to the Lord within our heart during this Christmas Mass. And for all the families of St. Gerard's Parish for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Newborn King, hear our prayers. Almighty and merciful God, hear the prayers that we offer to you, knowing you are doing more for us than we could ever ask or imagine, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all the church. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in him you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, 
with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven. We sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, our pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gerard Magella, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. For this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall not be healed.
The body of Christ. Good. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing, I just want to thank um, all those who made not only tonight's liturgy possible in a particular way, Chuck and Leslie, our director of music and our chief cantor, um, to thank uh, all those who made um, this space, uh, our new parish hall, festive and beautiful for the celebration of Christmas here, to our staff who have put in extra hours in this uh, historic moment of transitioning uh, into this space, preparing for our new parish church to be completed, please God, over the next few months. And also to you, the people of St. Gerard's, um, your generosity has helped us help over 150 families who have been in need um, during these rather challenging times. So thank you for your generosity of spirit, not just at this time of year, but throughout the year. And finally, on behalf of Deacon John, Father Vitus, Deacon Frank, we want to wish all of you and those joining us virtually a very Merry Christmas. To say that this past year has been a challenging one would, of course, be an understatement. But we take joy and comfort and hope in knowing that God is with us, Emmanuel, and that we will always win because God gives us the strength to continue on. So a very Merry Christmas to you and your families. Please know of our prayers for you each day. Keep us in yours as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.